Hello, and welcome to this short video presentation, How to Unclog a Flow Cytometer, Part 2, presented by the International Society for the Advancement of Cytometry and CytoU. In this short multimedia presentation, a systematic breakdown of the common steps towards unclogging a flow cytometer will be described. Although the specific examples given may not apply to all instruments, the methodologies described should apply to any flow cytometer. Always consult with your instrument's manufacturer for guidance and do not attempt any procedure which may void your service contract or warranty. My name is Evan Jellison, Director of Flow Cytometry at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine, and I'll be your narrator for today's presentation. In this presentation, I will discuss common troubleshooting techniques used to identify and eliminate clogs in a flow cytometer, starting with the simplest and least invasive methods, and moving towards more complex and more interventional methods. May we never forget Shapiro's first law of cytometry. A 51 micron particle clogs a 50 micron orifice. Part 2. Soft Interventions Once you have verified that the cytometer presents as all systems normal, the next place to look for an easy unclog solution is to visually inspect the sample injection port. Some systems have a rigid metal tube which interacts with the sample, while others use plastic. The sample injection port for many systems includes an outer and inner tube, where the outer tube has a cross-shaped opening that can sometimes trap larger aggregates of cells before they enter into the inner tube. This outer tube can easily be cleared by wiping with a lint-free absorbent wipe. For any system, be sure to use lint-free wipes and swabs that do not leave fibers behind during the cleaning process. Note that some swabs, such as the cotton-tipped applicator, or third example shown here, can easily fray with light abrasion. When in doubt, perform a rip test to ensure the durability of your cleaning materials. For systems such as the example shown here, the needle arm is responsible for delivering the sample to the sample injection port. For this system, both the needle arm and sample injection port should be checked and appropriately cleaned. On certain systems, the sample injection tube is enclosed within a bulk injection chamber. The sample injection tube can be accessed and cleaned using the change sample filter command within the software. When prompted, drop the sample line below the lower edge of the bulk injection chamber in order to gain access. Once the sample line is below the lower edge of the bulk injection chamber, it can be cleaned as needed. Many instruments have built-in scripts or fluidic cycles to deal with clogs on the instrument. These rely on back flushing of sheath or air through the sample line or flow cell in order to push out clogs. Some systems perform a quick back flush each time the sample is removed from the sample injection tube, but longer back flush cycles can be initiated. Check your instrument for similar fluidic cycles, including those that are primarily designed to remove air from the flow cell. They may be called degas or purge bubbles. If a back flush procedure doesn't unclog the instrument, it may be necessary to force detergents or other cleaners into the system. Always use detergents or cleaners that are compatible with your instrument. Install a tube filled with cleaning solution on the sample injection port and mark the fluid level on the tube. Run the instrument at maximum sample injection rate for several minutes and observe if the liquid has moved from its original line. Some systems have software programs which force cleaning solutions into the sample injection tube. In this example, note the cleaning solution is visually depleted from the sample tube as the sample path fills with liquid. Upon satisfactory cleaning, it is always important to rinse away any detergent residue from the sample port using copious amounts of purified water. It is especially important to do so prior to loading samples back on the instrument. As with any assay, reproducibility is key. This too is true for procedures as unglamorous as clog removal. 
To this end, it is important to verify that the instrument has not changed in any way as a result of your intervention. Ideally, you can rerun a sample that was successfully run before the clog occurred, but in the absence of such a sample, control cells such as glutaraldehyde fixed chicken red blood cells, leftover compensation control samples, or even quality control beads can be used to verify the instrument's performance. In a pinch, you might elect to run an aliquot of a new sample to verify that the clog has indeed been removed and your instrument is performing as expected. We have reached the end of this presentation. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to check out parts 1 and 3, and for more great cytometry-related educational content, please visit us on the web at cytou.org. On behalf of the International Society for the Advancement of Cytometry, thanks for joining us.